<laughs> but um, yeah, so I'm joined here with the guys from Friends of Rom, starting from right, my right to left. Hi, I'm Jay. Yep. Hello, I'm Gordon. And I'm Lindsay, hello. Excellent. Good to have you boys on the show now. Is it? It is good though, because let me tell you why, and I know that like, um, you probably interview a lot of, um, or do interviews and have interviewed a lot of people, and um, for, coming from the comedy world, I'm like, oh, man, I don't want to be that. So what was your most influential album mm. sort of thing? Oh, I'm glad um, you asked me that. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was uh, oh, I've how got a question coming up. Into action. <laughs> <laughs> um, but when I first started doing this show in 2017, I wrote a list of about five bands that I'd love to have on. You're the first from that list that I've actually been able to interview. So That's sad for the rest of your life. But, um, no, it's pretty it? good. Thy art is murder. Ba -ba. When you're yeah. an Uber fan. Yeah, I think if you if you put a bit on his North Face jacket, you might be able to get uh, a CJ up for an interview. <laughs> hey, I told you it'd be controversial. Um, well, I, I, I tried to interview them and they had to reschedule four times because of the lockdowns. Mm. Um, and then eventually they stopped replying to my email. So I guess we'll just call that as good as an interview. I got five emails out of it. Yeah. So that's more than and some of the other charge. bands did. Like yeah. put him on Instagram. Like here's, here's my interview. Well, I have to now. I've got to be transparent with the fans. <laughs> of course. I've built a living off being honest to Why the fans. Now I have to show them. Yeah. Um, but here's the other problem. <laughs> so when hang I, on. Who, who are the other bands? Um, so there was Danny Filth from Cradle of Filth. Ba -ba. Oh, we got some stories about him. Yeah, do right. We? Yeah, we do. We shared a bus. Well, we didn't share a bus but we, 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 we went on a bus once yeah we've been on a bus, bus i'm sure time. he's been on a bus a filthy we're practically bus. brothers <laughs> we're bus brothers well you've definitely i don't know if you filth. share you might not have shared um blood like brothers do but you've no, probably but we shared went on a really dirty bus and we we're like oh. danny filth must have been on this at some point <laughs> did anyone have tap ass is that why he got his is that why he got his last yeah name? he used to be a bus driver <laughs> really dirty. he doesn't clean shit <laughs> yeah well, danny <laughs> filth because he's really danny dirty. He's he's Get a mess! You're bloody filthy, you daddy! Pig. He's got the I've same got an voice. idea for a rock Actually, and roll name. Didn't he voice the guy from Fake Taxi? I don't know. No, what no, it's the, it's the, because I, I'll tell you, this is my Danny Filthy bus. bus. It doesn't turn out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a filthy bus. It's a bus. Well, no, the, this is my, technically a fake taxi. The closest I got to potentially queuing up an interview with uh, Danny Filth was when they played here, and I just said to him, um, "Can you sign my friend's Pokemon card?" And he's like, "Yeah, sure. What's his name?" And I said, "Oh, it's Ben." And he wrote, it's B E A, and I'm like, "There's no A," and he's just like. What'd you say his name was again? I'm like, it's Ben. And he's like, oh, I thought you said his name was Bean. I thought that's a fucking weird name, isn't it? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so now I call my friend Bean because, you know, Danny Filth yeah. said that that's his name. Nymphetta Bean. <laughs> but here's the, uh, you want to get the, the curly Just question out of the Yeah, please, yeah. please. So any question of ladle, of, yeah. ladle of filth. So wait, <laughs> thought out is murder. Ladle of filth. The bus driver. Who else? Us. All right, come on. No, oh, there's two more. Is this going to be an interview about me? <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. two more. About who you oh, I'm going to retitle this to Friends of Rum Interviews Canberra Metalheads. Um, and shit some. Well, welcome yeah. back to Triple J. We've got Jay and the Doctor here. <laughs> uh, we're just going to jump I mean, on no, with Canberra no, no, Metalheads. No. no, no. <laughs> Um, so anyway, the, the question was, um, there was obviously some controversy with the hidden track at the end of the 96 album. What was the, um, and, and, and it's, it's gone on to, um, it's gone on to Spotify as like they've, they've remixed it and there's multiple, multiple different versions. Yes. What was the original track that came out with that album when it was like a physical distribution? That was, there was 50, it was 50 tracks. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, what's the original track it. list? Lindsay oh, okay. didn't play on that one. Yeah. Um, ben joined. Coincidentally, the song is called yeah. Ben's a Cunt. Yeah. Um, uh, ben, actually, actually, ben actually yeah. wrote that song. Yeah. Oh. Full disclosure. I wrote the lyrics, but he wrote the music. And, uh, and then we stupidly thought we would split up that track into 50 tracks to fuck up people's shuffle on their <laughs> CD players. Yeah. So that when they pitch shuffle, it could be like days. four seconds of... Yeah. Random song. But then humorously, when it ended up on the now defunct iTunes platform, it would have cost you around nine hundred dollars to buy that album song by song. No way. Because every song they just both sort of 
oh, whatever fuck, algorithm yeah, just yeah, uploaded right. all 50 songs. Then, you know, most of it went for three seconds. Yeah. And uh, it still costs a dollar sixty eight or whatever. And I still haven't been reimbursed. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Man, um... I think well, that if, was a controversial question. No, no, yeah. the, no, no. They're small. <laughs> they're coming up. Um, what I, what I wanted I want to know, to do yes, yeah, please, what Hayden. I wanted to know was, I, uh, like, I, I like to find out not, not the normal shit. I want to know what was the first album you bought with your own money, first, and what was the first time like you watched TV or listened to music or you're in the car, the old HZ, whatever, and you hear a song and you think, fuck, and that's when you get, you know, possessed by music. Was the age set from like 1963? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, they're, they're 70s up. 78. You had a set. Yeah, had a set. Yeah. Um, Gordon, what was your yeah, first? Yeah, that record? was the Kingswood. That you bought with your own money. It was uh, James Bond, A View to a Kill soundtrack. Oh. On vinyl. Yeah, right. I can't remember what was on it, and I do not still own it. What was the What was the first band you saw live? Uh, okay, if we if you want to go deep, it was yeah, the Shantuzies. Wow. Yes. No, sorry, it was the Deltones. Yeah, right. At the Mildura Art Centre. Mine was Skyhooks. Well, I didn't oh. ask you. <laughs> but I wanted to tell you. it was the Shantuzies. <laughs> 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 first album, yeah. first live show. Uh, the Shantuzies and the Skyhooks. Uh, two answers that we've already heard. <laughs> um, first <laughs> album that I ever... I remember whispering... Shantuzies. I don't think that was the Scar version of the Shantuzies. Was it like 85 out now? Or something? <laughs> <laughs> Rip Snort of 72. <laughs> he didn't pay. Um... Uh, I think Whispering Jack probably. Whispering I don't know if I paid for Whispering Jack. I, I paid for Max Q, but that's not a very cool answer. Michael well, Hutchins' know, side project. Uh, yeah. first, that's truthful. That's what's good. First, no, the truth is boring. <laughs> first, uh, first uh, band I ever saw, my dad took me to see Kev Carmody and Eric Bogle. So that's, pretty, that's pretty cool. Yeah, pretty that cool. is. Um, is it? What? Oh, sorry, Mr. Simple Minds. No, uh, sorry, Mr. Howard Jones. Howard Jones. Thank oh, you very wow, much. okay. Because you're more my age, aren't you? 1972. Oh, 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 you're 52. Yeah, this year, September 22nd. Come along. That's two, two days after Charles' birthday. You never got an invite to your 50th. <laughs> <laughs> it's this year. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason for that, mate. Yeah, so what? So, say it again. Yeah, so Howard Jones' Dream yeah, right. Into Action album. Yep. And then I did see him on that tour, but it wasn't the first concert. The first concert was uh, Machinations um, playing with the Herbs without Dave Dobbin. Yeah, right. So basically it's like seeing the news without Huey Lewis. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, and uh, yeah, it was great. It was yeah. really good, really very formative. And is that what, like, but what was the, you know, that listened, like I can remember it, my cousin called me in and said, um, she goes, Hayden, come in quick, quick, quick. She lives in Wollongong now. She got me into music and she said, watch this. And it was ACDC on Countdown, the um, jail, like I love Kiss, like yeah. big time, but you know, um, Jailbreak, you know, the one with they're wearing the red coats and stuff. Like yeah. my, my, my little ginger mind just yeah. went. Well, I guess a similar thing, but, but more like in a live As scenario. To a ginger mind. Because um, yeah, yeah, sort of had been playing in bands, but just doing like you know, Deep Purple covers and Led Zeppelin, Gordy's favorite band covers, and um, and uh, then saw the Meanies and the Hard Ons within sort of a month of each other yeah. in Sydney, yeah, and, um, yeah. and then I was like, oh, I could probably do that. Yeah, I, my, my ass, like, like yeah, I was 15. We're at the at the patch, and I said to him, I want to be in a band. How do I do it? He just he just said, Hayden, you just fucking do it. Yeah. If we, we don't know how to play instruments, you know. Uh, talking to Blackie at the patch. <laughs> oh. He told me to just fucking do it. No, but like, yeah, how many did people really? did the yeah, hard on I did it. like inspire? Here I am. Like really. Yeah, I, I remember talking to Blackie at the patch one. <laughs> yeah, one time. <laughs> <laughs> must have been the same year. Uh, <laughs> it's a good story. on a bus? <laughs> I was on a bus with Danny Filth. Uh, <laughs> now, my, my answer's on it. All of that, all that some really, like, early 90s bad pop stuff. He saw yeah, Frenzel cool. Rom and changed his life. I saw Frenzel Rom uh, in 1995. Supported by Blister. At Soundcheck tonight. <laughs> and I, uh, I got the set list signed and got it framed and gave it to my girlfriend. And then That's cool. a couple of months later, I joined the band. And, and we, now we're married. And now we're married, yes. Yeah. That's cool. No, we broke up very shortly. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, did, did you sneak back in and get that fucking sign thing? No, I got my I got my own set list after oh, that. Okay, so, yeah. so I knew what songs yeah, I was exactly. playing. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's cool. That's that a good leads story. Into so you, you're a fan. Oh yeah, I was a horrible, yeah. horrible nerd of a fan. Oh, yeah, that's good. They're the best kind. In fact, yeah. I found my um. 
copies of um, a copy of Dick Sandwich that I bought from the video oh. shop um, from the from Mary Ellen from the video shop before I joined the band. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, With the original um, cover. Yeah, yeah, it's got both covers on. Yeah, it. yeah. You can turn it back. Anyway, I tr- I tried to. Um get away without saying my other two out of the five. Yeah, Meanie, I haven't forgotten. Yeah. Meanies and the hard-ons came up in that conversation and that was the other gotcha, two. Gotcha, yeah. Very, so very we cover difficult it all off in his questions. Notoriously hard to track down those yeah, bands. Yeah, so also a fucking random mix of bands. Yeah, well, um, we I got like, a, a, like rock and punk, metal, and my other co-host is like slam and, and uh, more the heavy stuff. Um, so it's, that's why I cover such a broad... I'm the... the the um, original podcaster for this one, and then I have a, a regular co host depending on what band I'm doing. Um, and that's why Hayden's here with this one because you know it's one of bo- both of our because he's old. Um, There's red hands in the back. <laughs> and I've got a good question to ask. Yeah, also because he's It'd my uncle hated. and I wanted to help Is him. He really? No, no, no. no. <laughs> People think that. Yeah, Don't sort of use with that. Yeah, like, yeah. I was his this dad. This is how you get your NDIS funding. You just got to. Yeah, I want to after him three days a week. So, yeah, we'll have to cut that. Out. out of all the shit we're going to talk, I'll cut that part out. I'm going to lose your NDIS funding. Well, the, I, I'll jump in with um, my random fucking story. So I started working at the basement in 2012, oh, which is the first time I seen you guys here. Yeah. Um, it was just after Jay had come back from surgery. Huh. Um, uh, I reckon it'll be a bit later than not that. Not an earworm, a brainworm. Yeah. Okay. I reckon the brainworm was <laughs> 2000 and. 14 ah, right. so, so it was pro- just before the surgery then. Gotcha. Um, yeah. And I, I remember. Peak. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, well, you and the uh, and, and your fellow yeah, traveller. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right in your brain. For, oh, um, that makes me sick. <laughs> you sick? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I'm at the bar. I've just gotten ready for the gig because at the time, Friends of Rom was getting 200 people into this bar, which is the most people that we were sort of planning to have f- for that year. Like, it was a pin- pinnacle, like, 200 people are going to be here. In when this, was the old room? When it was, like, the capacity was, like, 250 or 300. It's now yeah. up to 800. Um, Fuck, really? Yeah. So, um, so, we'll have to turn yeah, sure. some people back, probably, but... Um, <laughs> That was a that was a Boris the Blade thing. When yeah, I yeah, interviewed yeah. them, they had like probably about twenty five pre sales, and like I don't think we're going to have any trouble. It was like a COVID gig before COVID. Call from Clem. Please keep going. Clem. Oh, Clem, you're on speaker and you're being interviewed. Uh, in a podcast. Yeah. Uh, Hello. 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 Yes, you're entertaining us. Okay, All good. Stand by. Um, basically, what happens was um, everyone was away for the weekend, and I was the only bar- bartender that was here at that point. In, like at the start of the night, more people were coming. But I'm thinking to myself, like, how am I going to handle this crowd? Because we don't have security here. Oh yeah. And um, it's a you know being worded up. You know, it's a bit. It's a punk gig. You got to keep an eye on everybody. Don't overserve. All this sort of stuff. They were all up at Soundwave. The crew weren't they? Yeah. Well. It was either Soundwave or whatever was on at the yeah. time, and um, yeah. and I'm like, fuck, what am I going to do? So someone midway through the gig, and I don't know if you guys remember this, climbed the speaker stack and jumped into the audience. I tried to do a st- like a crowd. So it says on brand. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, this guy is going to like need to be asked to, to leave if he keeps causing shit. The crowd just crowd surf him out the door. So he gets back onto his feet and he's out the front. We're a very self-policing crowd. It was like a crowd-funded security, like for 100 people all put there. Because there was no single person to blame at that point. Like, it's like... It's the hive mind. It it was like... It was was the physical version of you've been voted off the island. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um... Yeah, and they also had to raise their hands to vote. But the, um... Yeah, that's my that's my first ever big gig at the basement, and now I'm back here. I didn't catch the 2018 gig that you guys did, but this is the first one since Next then. One. And yeah, it's gotcha. It's, it's just over 10 years later. Wow, we. So, um, if I'd have told 10 year ago me, 19 year old me, 
that um, I'd be here interviewing you guys here today, I wouldn't have believed it. So yeah, yeah. Because first Amazing. of all, you'd have to get over the fact that there was a future version of you talking to yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although if you had come to terms with that, the rest would have been less out of, what, of the. If, out if of I could the, have told uh, myself instead of having an emo fringe and clean shaven, I'd look like the man you see before you today. I think I, I, anything would have fucked. I reckon that that is possibly, with all due respect, yeah. such a. Uh, I think that is a very believable path. <laughs> It's kind of like all of the old, um, all the old uh, Nazi skinheads grew their hair oh, out yeah. and became rockabilly boys. <laughs> yeah. The um, all of the emo boys grew their beards out, bought flannels, and became you know your woodchopper um, yeah, yeah. scene kind of people. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah. It's the same person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Like, bought, bought what I've been wearing since I was seven. Bought guitar, hit their yeah. Fallout Boy CDs. Yeah, it's and, funny because woodchoppers actually look at Hayden and say, "We want to look like that." He started. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, some young guys came up to me and said, um, "Oh man, how long have you had your beard for?" And I said, "Oh." This is my second one because my first I lost because of my cancer. And they're like, oh yeah. They said, when did you first grow? I said, oh, 18, 19, I think it was. I had a beard. Mm. And they're like, oh, you had a beard before it was even cool. I said, fucking beards have always been cool. Yeah, fucking, <laughs> back in history. <laughs> yeah. What I was going to ask you, just one yeah, question, yeah. was yeah. what is one of your favourite, that people might know, one of your favourite up and coming Aussie bands, not fucking from overseas, oh, shit. Aussie I've, bands? I've only got overseas bands. So uh, yeah. That you've seen and played with or you've heard and you would like to share out. Oh look, my my you know um, love of my life at the moment is uh, the band Coffin. Yes, they're fucking killing it yep. at the moment. And uh, we recorded their um, last few records. Yeah, and they're bloody sweethearts. Yeah, and they're also social menaces. Yep, and um, very fun uh, music and dudes. Yeah, right. I know Artie's dad. We can't have everything. <laughs> <laughs> he comes from the tweet. He's in the Yowies too. Go, Mr. Man. Um, there's this band called Charlotte and the Harlots. Oh. Um, no, actually, I was gonna, I was gonna say Scabs. But they, don't, yeah. they don't really count as new, though. Uh, I've been around. Not for really. I mean, neither did Coffin, but yeah, it's true. Um, who else is playing around Wollongong at the moment? Who are bloody great? Anyway, any um, up and comers at Hawkfest? <laughs> <laughs> See, because I work for the radio station in Wollongong, the ABC, and we have a thing at the ABC <laughs> called Honkfest. Yeah. Jason, there's a thing in Wollongong called Honkfest. Yeah, Wollongong. Jason thinks all I ever do do is advertise Honkfest and give away free tickets to Honkfest. <laughs> also hot air balloon rides. Are you the pusher man for the gong? Yeah. I'm just here to promote Gong-ganians. Honkfest. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is basically when a whole bunch of people with woodwind instruments take to the streets. Oh, yeah. and we brass. have one of them here. Don't folk forget festival. the brass. Yeah, yeah. Just so people know what We've it's about. We've got one here in Canberra as well. It's the folk Anything festival. Anything you can honk. <laughs> Oh, the National Folk Festival. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Remember the National Folk Festival had a bit of controversy this year because mm. Katie Noonan decided to uh, program acts that weren't all trad white yes. boys playing folk. Oh, there was people like losing their shit. Mm. Yep. Love getting it. Getting terse. Her name I love it. Yeah, folk George. people get terse, don't they? <laughs> it's Katie. <laughs> fuck this shit. Yeah, people commenting on Facebook yeah. and all things. Oh. Right. Getting their yeah. grandkids to show them how to use it so their, they can comment and get. Yeah. Getting their hackles up. Um, and yourself, mate, what's a... Uh, do you want to... Uh, oh, 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 mate, they just sat down. What's your... Uh, what's your first? <laughs> Fuck. Gordy. Yeah, what's your favourite new up-and-coming group? Gordy. Woo! That you, you've either played with or you've heard and you, 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 you actually dig. Well, I did see... Because you get a bit jaded after a while, I noticed. No, myself. not at all. Yeah. Um, no. I saw a band out of Lismore just a couple of oh, weeks yeah. ago. Grinspoon? <laughs> Thanks, I reckon that one. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Oh, that was a joke. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. tell me, Lismore, that's good. That's yeah, my no, it's not good. Oh, hi, Mario. <laughs> it's not good. The tweet. <laughs> Dude, you guys have kept me honest this whole There's interview. There's a good band from Lismore called Hussy Hicks. Two, two, like they're a duo, two chicks, and they yep. fucking, they sound like the Divinals. They're fucking yeah, excellent. Okay. Mm. And they recently, of course, like everyone, lost their house and home yeah. studio. They had to yep. kayak out yeah. of their studio That's with all crazy. their gear. Like, it was fucking crazy, yeah. No, I was lucky I didn't lose my, my gear, which is good, but... It's almost ready, our house, so that's good. But I, you know, I don't know if you saw the footage I took of me fly fishing in the lounge room on the lounge. I got oh. fucking hassled about that. Really? Like, because almost death the threats. They're like, they're like, oh, how can you be, how can you be frivolous about your house flooding? People are losing their lives and shit. And I said, well, there was nothing we could fucking do. Yeah. Yeah. And there was good fish to be caught. Yeah, there's yeah. yeah. the yeah. family yeah. Yeah. Found, yeah. Down, found down the road, found a little brim in their, in their lounge room, which was pretty funny. That's like, you know, I was fuck, hoping. Fuck fucking hoof to hook. Yeah. This is like, <laughs> fucking lounge room hook yeah. to fucking fry yeah. band yeah. on the one exactly. line.
Um, Park of furniture. <laughs> to the, to the, to the coffee table. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm going to look that up about the Lismore crew. The only other one I wanted to ask him was, it's totally off topic, but I was just going to ask him, what is the most outrageous rumour they've heard about ginger people? And do you uh. have any... Oh, no, I've got a good one. I've got a good one. I just need to, okay, good. I need to get it from my brain. Okay, Hang good. On. Oh, what is it? Oh, no, it's that ginger people don't feel pain at the same threshold. As much. Is this, yeah. is this a, yeah. common, a common thing? Yeah, and they, that, that's, yeah. they have to give you more... Um, it happened to me the other day. At least he knows he's not dreaming now. And aesthetic and stuff. That's actually a true one. Is it? Yeah, that's actually science. Is that like a Viking thing? I don't know. I think it's like... Because supposedly gingers have a lot more... Uh, Resilience because people make fun of them all. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. Right, so stand up. We and are afflicted. Headbutt each other as hard as you can. <laughs> I'm sad I didn't have any ginger kids, Just, but they will. The, the the best thing is like for once I can show my fiance a video where I was the one that kept trying to keep the conversation on. <laughs> yeah, track. you're corralling yeah. it. Um, yeah, exactly. You've kept me honest this whole interview, and, and, and you've made that. sure that I did my research, and that comes a lot from your radio experience, I Does would it? say. Mm. Um, well, I mean. Without, with, with my unofficial opinion, uh, <laughs> as, a, as a bartender, um, we're close to Sykes, but not quite on the same money. Yep. But um, I have a final question for you guys. Oh, actually, um, what, sorry, where are the controversial questions? Well, no, we've got. This is it. Come on, let's go. Is it? Oh, no, ready? this is a this is a fan favourite. Yeah. So the, the, I haven't asked any other band this. I'm breaking it out on you we'll guys. We're doing the Harlem next. Um, so. What was the first, it's a double part. So first part is what's the first ever band that you guys opened for <laughs> when you were coming up that was like the big score because you got to open for this band? I mean, and this you were frothing. Two, this is kind of two questions. Yeah. Oh, sorry, well, was there another part to the question? After this one's answered, I've got okay, a second Okay, so that's part. two questions. Yeah, <laughs> there will be a second. <laughs> um, uh, for band we opened up for, I remember opening up um, very early on for the Buzzcocks. Oh, wow. That and, would have been pretty big. And it was the second, it was their second go round um, of Australia. So they, I don't think, uh, maybe either they hadn't been here at all, or they'd only been here once in the eighties. But yeah, early nineties they came, and we played a show with them at Selena's. And the tour before had been a massive success. So the tour we played with them was a total disaster. <laughs> oh no! And no one came, wow. and they played in a room of two thousand people. Well, they it, it held, it held two thousand people, and I think there was maybe like two hundred. Turned up. Yeah, uh, right. But for us, we didn't give a shit. We no, no, play with the so, yeah. so you like so you're 92, right? You started at uni. Yeah. So how long after that was it when you actually supported? I reckon that was like 94. Oh wow, that's awesome, yeah. hey. Fuck that, Buzzcocks. Yeah. I got goosebumps. That's massive. Yeah. What about you, Mr. Doctor Man? Oh, I it was before I was in the band, but I see one of my favourite bands, especially when I first joined Parental Rom was Chisholm, this is Serious Mum. And um, when I joined the band, I'm like, I had like Chisholm cassettes and stuff, which this guy used to break oh, and throw Chism in the bin. Yeah. And uh, I found out that Frenzel had supported Tism, but had like pissed them off and stolen their rider and stuff. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that, you know, yeah, that yeah, sounds yeah. good. And it made it made me very. Uh, but and me and, Tism, and, me and Ben that night, um, there was a guy that, um, that was, I think it was his, their record label. Oh, okay. And, and Ben and I enamored ourselves to him by getting on all fours and crawling around him, barking like dogs. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like something that someone from Tism's record label would enjoy. <laughs> he did not. What? Any outstanding groups that you played with that really pushed your buttons? Oh, oh my God, no. Forgotten. Bad religion? No. What about when you supported oh, Friends Big? Big? No. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, um, tis, uh, tism, what? no, Blister. <laughs> Gordy's band, Blister, supported us at, um... Oh, I didn't know that. In, in, well, in yeah. Logan. I didn't know you were in, because you weren't in the band. No, I was I in the band. didn't know you were okay. in Blister. Very briefly. I, I, I was only in the band very briefly before Gordy joined. But um, there was some festival in Logan, and I remember you guys closed with You're the Voice, and that was like, for me, a big fan of John Farnham. Yeah. yeah. Watching Blister cover You're the Voice. That At Logan. Like, we're talking Logan home here, like, are we? Is this? <laughs> beautiful story. I love how I it's feel gone like full made, circle to be Friends or Rom interviews yeah. Friends or Rom. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's cool. You did You're the Voice. I'm sure you Just did You're the Voice. Yeah. 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 Well, there was no scar. No other no, strokes. No other no, 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 no. I'm just glad that I'm not in the opening band because I'd have to leave you guys to it and go and start playing <laughs> in a minute. But I, um, 
really appreciate the time. I know we only wanted to do 15. Hey, no We're worries, clocking man. heaps more time. Do you want to hear the second part of that oh, question yeah. as yeah, the closer? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, come on, let's go. So that was your first big band and um, support acts and trying to make it and support bands and get into the scene and playing to fuck all people and then big festivals and shit. How does it feel now to be that headlining band for the supports tonight? Absolutely incredible. Oh my God. I mean, oh, we've made it. I mean, let's well, face it. Sometimes well, yeah, another young crew. That's pretty. Yeah. Sometimes I sit here and look at where we are and just think, oh my god, <laughs> where we and you just where's the cocaine on the boots and stuff? But you know, yeah, I know. Or bums. Fourteen on landslide. When you look up, you but it must be good. I, I, I think if, if people were saying in interviews <laughs> that like young crew that friends with Rom are a big influence that i think i'm always constantly be. surprised but yeah. also it's lovely that yeah. people like the band yeah. still after all these years and we're at this point where like there's generations of people coming yeah. including in the support bands as yeah. well yeah. Um, yeah yeah like you'll see like a woman or a man and they're like daughters or sons in the front row of our gig and like, it's like when i watched alice cooper last, a couple of years ago it's like when she supported the heart i was like they were the first band i ever supported yeah, yeah. you know what yeah. i mean like yeah, yeah. Oh, you, must have, a, you must have had a tear in your oh, eye Oh, big that. time. Yeah. Even talking about it's making me get a bit. Uh, just as just as a bonus after the outro, quick one. Here we go. What was it like to finally sell the touring van and then the person oh, jumps yeah. in it and it didn't even fucking start? Oh, the old uh, the Kingswood. Oh, oh, not the Kingswood. Yeah, yeah. No, we, the um, of that. we definitely had a um, very quick exit from that scenario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, that's a so my old man used to drop me off to school in a '68 Kingswood sedan. Which is, which is the HK. You guys had the gotcha. 78, but it still had the brown bench seat oh, yeah. and yeah. the 202, well, which right. is like the Aussie workhorse. Yeah. Um, so I would be riding to school, listening to Friends or Rom, and not realizing that like it's the same sort of fucking car that you guys were like driving around. <laughs> yeah. um, and so, you know, it's back on the road. Yeah. Last year. Oh, um, is it? The, yeah, yeah. She, That's cool. The, she got it on back on the road and took it in. It's in Rocking. It's in uh, yeah. Rockhampton, and she took it in the Rocky Nats, which is like the Rockhampton. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. Nats. We actually, when when that competition happened, whenever the fuck it was, you didn't have a license at that point. You yeah. didn't have a license at that point. Oh, I think I was the only one in the band that had a license. I popped a tire. So it was me, over a gunner. me and our mate <laughs> Bruz literally yeah. drove that thing from Sydney yeah. right up to Rockhampton, up the coast. So you did like you're talking That's the major four label train tour in that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. How many caves, you know? Fuck up, no idea. Just but... Google Map it, you'll work it out. Yeah, yeah. we drove for like 10, 12 hours a day. Fuck, it was ah. so fucked. And see, that was the entire marketing budget for that <laughs> tour and that album. <laughs> the late record label just bought us a car and said, off your fuck. It actually was, they were like, do you want to do TV ads or radio ads? They are like, we should buy Kingswood. <laughs> did, did anyone like know how to fix cars? No. Any no. Of you guys? Oh, God, no. Like, that, that was, that's living on the edge shit, that. Yeah. Yeah, oh. on the edge of just... <laughs> You know, bad decisions. <laughs> yeah, on the edge of financial ruin. <laughs> All right. I imagine, I mean, there are, I guess when you think of like bacteria yeah. um, living in Ireland, yeah, sort yeah. of, uh, you know, residing on the uh, on the body of, a, of an Irish guitarist, they really are living on the edge. I'm quitting quitting comedy, man. I'm just getting <laughs> fucking shown up left and right here. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Great time. <laughs> hey, um, from the edge. Yeah. Well, thanks for, I, I, I thanks guess, for having us. Yeah, I guess this is uh, the the end of the show. Thanks very much for being on. And uh, I guess this. The sky is <laughs> head, head on over oh, to. No, get off me! That's the real living on the edge. <laughs> <laughs> With his nine foot dick. <laughs> <laughs> How's how, he, how's how he insisted that it had to be on that fucking well, what's on the album cover? From what's happening? Larry Mullen Jr. Do you know that story? Dick. He wouldn't he wouldn't do sign something unless they put his dick on the album cover. You know that one where they went all like spacey and 
Yeah. Anyway, yeah. on there, he's going strong on there. It's about, it's, it's, it looks like a baby with an apple in its hand. It's fucking huge. And I've got wrote other co-hosts to choose from. And Jaden is fucking I think you're going to start thinking about the decisions you make in your life. Like, I can't believe that I made the best decision in this room right now to have Hayden here. Like, uh, 100%. I can't believe Larry Mullen Jr. has got a nine foot dick. Yeah. I just can't no, fucking no, believe it's, it's not butter. Um, I might be exaggerating. I've known to exaggerate a little bit, but you know. Yeah. Th- th- Only th- a little bit. Thanks very much for being on the yeah. show. Wrapping up. Larry <laughs> Thank you very I'm much, guys. Mark, we're, we're here with the guys from Friends of Rum. Thanks very much for being on the uh, Thanks, Thanks, you. Oh, no, now I like Say you. thank you. Oh, thank you to Larry Mullen. And, uh, if this was <laughs> radio, you, we would now be playing Friends of Rom. Never had so much fun. Oh, Fucking oh, getting into your workday week. Yeah.